The Redaction Project is a collaboration between um, Reginald Dwayne Betts and myself. Uh, Dwayne and I have been friends for a very long time. Our relationship started uh, with a really good argument about Ta-Nehisi Coates. You know, it's Titus, man. We live in the same neighborhood. You know, we both live in New Haven. And I figure anybody who I can argue an hour with about Ta-Nehisi Coates uh, is somebody I should have in my corner. Yeah, so the Redaction Project, essentially what we're doing is trying to combine my poetic vernacular with his visual vernacular. Dwayne has used his legal skills and his poetic skills to create uh, this document. Um, we worked with the CRC. They gave us these legal complaints. Our legal documents are often very journalistic. And Dwayne was talking about some of our complaints uh, in Montgomery and in Ferguson and in Texas and in California and got this idea to just sort of like make poems out of them. I thought, what if I took that same language and I stripped it of everything that was superfluous to the grandmother who was locked up because they couldn't pay a $500 fine. To look at the sort of emotional impact of this issue of money bail on these individuals. What you see is this black paper and this text on the paper and then the redaction, the removal of pieces of the language, which leaves you with this poetry. On top of that, I made portraits of some of the individuals whose cases were being pleaded. I etched them on top of the paper, and then I made another portrait and etched it on top of that as well. What we wanted to do is take something that was essentially used to demean people, used to signal that a person was less, and we wanted to turn that whole form into a way to say that a person was more. What's so exciting about the, the show that we did through Art for Justice at MoMA, where we displayed redaction and, and started a series of public conversations about the cases behind the redaction project as well. The existence of the criminal punishment bureaucracy and all of its horror is only allowed to exist because so few people know about it. I think what Art for Justice is doing is revolutionary. Their willingness to support this project in its infancy, right, just speaks to their vision and their ability to speak the language of artists. When we needed the money to explore the idea, they were willing to take that risk on us. And then we found ourselves in a, in a position where, you know, actually we could sell the work and get that money back to Art for Justice as a way to say, listen, this is an investment in moving a culture. This is an investment in changing some of the practices of our criminal legal system. And so for that reason, we are donating one portfolio back to the Art for Justice Fund to raise money for the young artists who are following us.